So Louise, I mean, let's just let's just get going. What we, we, I mean, you obviously, you know, see a wide range of student writing projects and reports. And I mean, I guess you've built up a really good understanding, you know, having seen so much student writing of what are some of the common mistakes that students are making? And what would you say are the top two or three, you know, that we can just talk about now and then maybe in a follow up, what are some of the solutions and suggestions and tips and techniques that you can help people with getting those things right? Okay, well, I think the biggest issue that I'm normally picked up and they usually fall into these three categories. Either it's formatting, um, then you also have issues in terms of language, and then finally just referencing. Um, in terms of where you fall, in, whether you're undergraduate, first year, second year, third year, or your postgraduate, honors, master's, doctorate, the same issues come up. Um, I think with the undergrads, mainly the formatting issue, you don't realize that when your department says, listen, your margins have to be two centimeters. You have to type in Times New Roman. Some students might feel that that is kind of like taking away the individuality. And then you often find them coming back and then they've done it in a new font and there's color and there's all these type of things. What I often say to undergrads is, listen, the formatting should follow what the instruction is. And the reason why uh, your university or your lecture does that, it's not that they're trying to cramp your style. Um, what they're trying to do is teach you for later on when you're postgraduate uh, in your PhD level and you want to start publishing in journals internationally, those journals also have formatting things. They expect you to write in a certain way. They expect a certain formatting. So first thing I always say is just follow the instructions. I know it seems very, you know, I don't want to do that and I don't understand it and I don't care for it. Just do it. <laughs> you, you'll You'll get more marks for it, most likely, because the thing is, everybody's um, assignments look the same then. And then your lecturer can really start focusing on the language, what you're trying to say. So we don't have that interference of um, the person trying to figure out why you put everything into double spacing when the instruction was clearly 1.5 or something like that. So formatting, very definitely one of the first things. Secondly, language. I think a lot of students, I understand, you know, not all of us have a background or love for the English language. Um, mm. And some of us really struggle with it. Um, but it is a tool to get your thoughts across. And unfortunately, in the world, English is kind of the business language. So if you're not good with English, I often say, you know, just try and do small things. Um, one of the first things that, that come to mind is keep your sentences short. Uh, Martin Katz has a wonderful book called The Oxford um, Guide to Plain Language, and he gives 22 guidelines on how to write successfully. And one of the first things he says is chop up your snakes. If a sentence is more than 20 words, make it shorter. Um, I've actually found that on average, most people write about 25 words per sentence. So I kind of let that slide. I don't you know, cut up a sentence unnecessarily, but keep to the 15 to 25 word rule per sentence. And um, if you start nearing 35, then the red warning light should definitely be going on and saying, whoa, this sentence is too long. The reason why we also do that is if you keep your sentences short, then you can have one idea per sentence. And then the person reading your um, text can actually focus on that one idea. and move on with where you're going and they can follow. So they don't have to keep too many ideas in the back of their mind to remember what you said at the beginning of your 45 word sentence, to remember where you're going at the end of your 45 word sentence. So that's the language. And then obviously also you, you get a lot of worries about, do I write in passive voice? Do I write in active voice? I think in the past, passive voice used to be the style in academic writing. Nowadays, because I obviously with inclusivity and all of those things <laughs> and as the guy says death by english <laughs> um, <laughs> it has changed uh, i think the academic world has started realizing that you know people are probably writing in a third or fourth uh, yep. language english so the simpler the language the better and this yes. is actually something that has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, Albert Einstein, many, many years ago, actually said that if you cannot explain any idea to a four-year-old, 
and have them kind of understand where you're going with it, then you're not mm. understanding the idea yourself. And that is the basis of plain language. We want yep. to get all our ideas across. And then lastly, the referencing, um, I think, as Gabby said a few weeks ago, students have this fear of getting it wrong or being thrown out of the university and expelled and not being able to go back to a tertiary institution in five years. Referencing is scary. And we understand why it's there. It's there to protect yourself and to protect others so that ideas are actually built upon and not just repeated over and over and over through plagiarism or stealing or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think something that a lot of students also don't realize is referencing is a formula. Whether you're writing in the Harvard style, the Chicago Manual of Style, any one of those, they all follow a formula. And that's usually a surname, a comma, initial, full stop, the title, full stop. You can quickly figure out what the formula is if you just pay a little bit of attention. And if you're unsure, YouTube is a wonderful source, even Google. If I don't understand something, I usually go and find it through Google. Um, so that, that's mainly the three things. It's the, the formatting, the language, and the referencing that you see.